First up, Ming-Na Wen. Scarlett has had a ton of controversial moments in her career, but I think this one easily got the most media coverage and pushback. When Steven Spielberg got the rights to remake a Japanese movie called Ghost in the Shell, he cast Johansson in the lead role. The role was called Major, a cyborg soldier with a human brain and a cybernetic body, who is the main character. Although the project was a huge hit in Asia and was expected to do similar numbers in North America, this casting decision led the movie to be a flop, because fans accused the movie of whitewashing. The public called on the studio to cast an Asian woman in the role instead of a white woman, since it was based on a Japanese character. Months later, Stephen Paul, a producer on the film, defended the decision to cast Johansson as Major, explaining to BuzzFeed News that Sanders' Ghost in the Shell adaptation takes place in an international world, adding that it isn't just a Japanese story and it does not just focus on Japan, rather the whole world. Johansson also did not back down when asked about the casting and stood by the decision. When talking about it with Mary Claire, she said, quote, I never presumed to play another race. Diversity is important in Hollywood, and I would never want to feel like I was playing a character that was offensive. She then pivoted to talk about how amazing it is to have a woman heading a huge franchise like this. Johansson also defended the choice by stating that the character is a human brain inside of a machine body, making it identity-less. But Asian actors did not agree with Johansson's take and shared how disappointed they were in the casting choice. When the photo of Johansson in the film came out, Ming Na Wen, who stars on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tweeted, quote, Nothing against Scarlett Johansson, in fact I'm a big fan, but everything against this whitewashing of Asian role. Many other actors shared similar sentiments, but whitewashing the franchise. Harvey Weinstein In 2017, the terrible actions of movie producer Harvey Weinstein were exposed to the public, and plenty of actresses came forward sharing their experiences working with him. Many shared that they had to perform sexual favors in exchange for roles. In light of all the terrible press surrounding Weinstein, Many actresses boycotted Weinstein and his family, including his wife at the time, Georgina Chapman, who founded the clothing brand Marquesa. However, Scarlett did not boycott Marquesa, and instead she decided to show off the designer by wearing them at the Met Gala that year. Multiple actresses also came forward to share that Weinstein previously pressured and even threatened them to wear Marquesa to events, so many felt his wife was in cahoots with him. Many people questioned why Johansson, a supporter of both Me Too and Time's Up, decided to publicly support Chapman's designs. She explained herself in an interview with Entertainment Tonight, saying, quote, I wore Marquesa because their clothes make women feel confident and beautiful. It's my pleasure to support a brand created by two incredibly talented and important female designers. Jamie Clayton In 2018, Johansson had another casting blunder when she signed up to play the role of Dante Tex Gill, a trans man that operated a massage parlor business in the 70s in the film Rub and Tug. The LGBTQ community and its allies argued that the role should have gone to a trans actor, not a cisgender woman, and said it contributed to trans erasure. Even with all the criticism, Johansson once again stood her ground and offended the casting. Mainly, she tried to take the blame off herself and put it onto other cis actors who had played trans characters in the past. Johansson told Bustle at the time, quote, Tell them they can be directed to Jeffrey Tambor, Jared Leto, and Felicity Huffman's refs for comment. This is because Jeffrey Tambor played a trans woman on Transparent, Jared Leto was cast as a trans woman in Dallas Buyers Club, and Felicity Huffman took on a role as a trans woman in Trans America. However, since the backlash with the project did not stop, Johansson later decided to leave the project. Johansson went on to say she understood why people felt that Dante should be played by a trans actor, adding that she's grateful to participate in a controversial debate that sparked a larger conversation about diversity and representation in film. She said later that she mishandled the backlash. Trans actor Jamie Clayton shared their thoughts in a tweet, writing, quote, Actors who are trans never even get to audition for anything other than trans characters. That's the real issue. We can't even get in the room. Cast actors who are trans as non-trans characters, I dare you. However, the drama with this casting did not end there, and Johansson said more controversial statements surrounding this topic a year later, saying that she should be able to play any character that she wants. Quote, you know, as an actor, I should be allowed to play any person or any tree or any animal because that is my job and the requirements of my job. Adding, quote, today there's a lot of emphasis and conversation about what acting is and who we want to see represent ourselves on screen. The question now is, what is acting anyway? However, she later said that her controversial comments were taken out of context and was edited for clickbait. She later clarified, saying, quote, I personally feel that in an ideal world, any actor should be able to play anybody in art and all forms should be immune to political correctness. 
That is the point I was making, albeit it didn't come across that way. Woody Allen Another controversial take from Scarlett was her support of Woody Allen during his scandal, where he's accused of sexual misconduct by several women, including Dylan Farrow, who is the child of Mia Farrow, whom Allen married. After this, many women took Dylan Farrow's side and boycotted Allen. However, Scarlett was not one of them and actually defended Woody Allen. Johansson had worked with Allen on films like Match Point, Scoop, and Vicky Cristina Barcelona, and she said in 2019 that she would still work with him if the opportunity came up. After the allegations surfaced, Johansson said in an interview, quote, I love Woody. I believe him and I would work with him anytime. Apparently, she speaks with him often, and the pair have had many conversations about these allegations. She added, quote, I've been very direct with him, and he's very direct with me. He maintains his innocence and I believe him. This is not only very problematic, but also hypocritical, because Scarlett publicly called out James Franco for supporting Time's Up before five women accused him of misconduct. Dylan Farrell also called out Scarlett on Twitter. Quote, if we've learned anything from the past two years is that you definitely should believe men who maintain their innocence without question. Scarlett has a long way to go in understanding the issues she claims to champion referring to the actor's public support of Me Too and Time's Up. Months later in her 2019 Vanity cover story, Johansson doubled down on her previous comments about Allen. Quote, It's my experience. I don't know any more than any other person knows. I only have a close proximity with Woody. He's a friend of mine. I have no other insight other than my relationship with him. Continuing that she doesn't want to lie or edit herself, and she wants to openly share her opinions on the matter. Benedict Cumberbatch Recently, Scarlett Johansson got tons of press after she decided to sue Disney over their Black Widow premiere. It's common for actors to get a portion of the box office numbers, but Scarlett felt she was not given a fair amount by Disney because they decided to premiere the movie at home on Disney+, Plus, as well as in theaters, which made the theater sum significantly smaller than usual. Fellow Disney star Benedict Cumberbatch reacted to the news, calling the ordeal, quote, a bit of a mess. During a wide-ranging profile with The Hollywood Reporter, Benedict Cumberbatch said he thought it was sad how the whole thing was unfolding. The lawsuit claims that Johansson lost untold potential revenue while Disney execs profited by growing the Disney Plus streaming services base at the same time. Disney fired back, calling the lawsuit sad and distressing, in its callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the new state of the world due to lockdown measures. When asked about the legal turmoil with his co-star, Cumberbatch said, quote, it's sad what's going on between the lawyers, but he said we need to put it in contact of what's happening in the world right now. Adding, quote, the whole thing's just a bit of a mess. We're trying to understand what the revenue stream should be for artists to contribute to the billion dollar business that is Disney, and it has to be contractualized. Many were surprised that he didn't all out support Johansson like other stars had at the time. WandaVision star Emily Olsen called the move brave, and she fiercely defended Johansson's decision. Jennifer Lawrence This is one we're not sure is a real feud or not. But sources claim that since Lauren and Johansson are both engaged and plan to wed in New York City, they are trying to upstage each other with their weddings. According to the outlet, Johansson and Lawrence have never liked each other, and the situation is getting worse now that they're both planning weddings in the New York area. The source said they definitely want to outshine each other on their big days, and it's assumed their weddings will take place shortly after one another's. Apparently, Johansson has always been a little envious of the roles that Jen's got over her because Scarlett believes she's more talented than Jen. Apparently, Scarlett also doesn't like Jen's quirky personality and finds it annoying. Adding, quote, she feels Jennifer is a bit of a phony. The feud was taken up a notch when both women looked at the same venue for their wedding in the Hamptons, but they don't want to get married at the same place, so they are keeping serious tabs on one another. First up, of course, we have Mariah Carey. Even if you're not familiar with many of JLo's feuds, I'm sure you know that Mariah Carey hates her. That's because Mariah has not been shy about throwing shade in her direction. These two have been feuding ever since JLo started to make music and started to steal her shine. Then when Mariah was asked about Lopez in an interview, she famously replied, quote, I don't know her. Years later, when Andy Cohen brought up the beef on his show, Watch What Happens Live in 2014, Jennifer Lopez played the whole thing off saying, quote, I don't have a feud against her at all. I know from back in the day, I've read things that she said about me that were not the greatest, but we have never met. Like we don't know each other. I would love to meet her and I would love to be friends with her. But then JLo was a little more savage on the Wendy Williams show when asked about the feud in 2016. Lopez said, quote, she's forgetful, I guess we've met so many times. But Carrie doubled down in another interview where she added that she still doesn't know Jennifer Lopez. When Mariah had a mishap of her own during a disastrous New Year's Eve performance, Lopez took a break from the high road and liked an extremely shady tweet about Mariah. The tweet said, quote, ever seen an accident you couldn't take your eyes away from? That was her tonight. If you're wondering where this feud started, it all goes back to Mariah's ex-husband and music executive, Tommy Mottola. 
After getting married in 1993, Carrie divorced Matola in 1998 because he was very controlling. And to get back at her, Matola started up JLo's career and did everything possible to make JLo a star instead of Mariah. JLo sampled a number of Mariah esque songs. There were even allegations she straight up copied some of Mariah's songs, but tried to make them more of a hit. All because of Matola. But Mariah knows she still came out on top, adding, quote, After all that shit, Loverboy ended up being the best selling single of 2001 in the United States. So basically, the whole feud is over career competition and the fact that Lopez was in cahoots with Carrie's controlling ex. Rosie Perez You'd think that JLo and Rosie Perez would be great friends, considering how much they have in common. Both women are dancers, are Puerto Rican, and grew up in New York. But the pair are not close, and it would be more accurate to say that they actually hate each other. According to Perez's 2014 memoir, Handbook for an Unpredictable Life, she has plenty of negative stories to share about JLo. In her memoir, Perez shared a story from the set of In Living Color. She wrote about Lopez, quote, all of the girls were coming into my office complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. And added she was acting like, quote, some ghetto b screaming and pounding her chest. Chelo ended up leaving that show after two seasons, but the feud between the pair continued, and Perez claimed that Lopez would speak negatively about her whenever she got the chance. Even worse, Lopez was allegedly two-faced. She would talk trash behind Perez's back, but be nice to her face. Brandy In the midst of the Mariah and JLo feud, Brandy publicly supported Mariah, making it clear she does not like JLo. In July of 2017, Brandy took to Instagram to share a photo of herself hugging Mariah Carey with the caption, hashtag she knows me. An obvious reference to Mariah's infamous, I don't know her comment about JLo. All the comments were flooded with people speculating over the caption, and the consensus quickly became that the photo was a dig at JLo. However, Brandy later addressed the caption, writing, quote, Oh my god, what happened? I swear to goodness, I didn't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic, and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny. Can't take this one down. I love this picture, and whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. Later adding that Mariah does in fact know her. Mariah supported the post by commenting, quote, I sure do. Even though Brandy is trying to convince us it's nothing shady, I honestly don't believe it. Next up, Nicki Minaj. It's long been rumored that Jennifer Lopez is a huge diva, and the fight that her and Nicki Minaj had while on American Idol brought up both of their diva sides. In 2012, Lopez was a judge on American Idol while Nicki came on to perform, and things got tense fast. After Nikki finished performing, she went over to the judges' table and asked, quote, I was hoping maybe I could come back and be a guest judge. J-Lo, can you scoot over a little bit? J-Lo then responded, quote, I don't know if there's enough room for both of us. Then Minaj took it up another notch backstage when she said, quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's going to have it. But she later added, quote, we were just joking around. But it's clear the bad blood is still there. When Lopez performed at the 2015 AMAs, she sang a part of Minaj's song, Anaconda. But I don't think Nikki got the memo that it was going to be happening, because when the camera panned to Nikki, she did not look happy. Fans totally saw the shade and started tweeting about it that night. Rihanna Rihanna and JLo started feuding right around the time that JLo was seen getting cozy with Rihanna's ex, Drake. This all happened in 2016, when JLo and Drake took a photo backstage at JLo's concert. Once the photos came out, everyone assumed that they were dating, which probably got the attention of his exes. A lot of fans felt the whole thing was most likely a publicity stunt, but Rihanna took the rumors pretty seriously and lashed out online because of it. A source said at the time that Rihanna suffered, quote, the ultimate betrayal and dubbed Lopez desperate and a traitor. This was because Rihanna and JLo were really tight at one point, and Rihanna even got support from JLo during rough times with Drake. Then in December of 2016, Rihanna unfollowed JLo on Instagram, making her stance very clear. Jenna Dewan When the pair started alongside each other on World of Dance, they seemed like they got along great. Lopez was a producer and a judge, while Dewan was a host and mentor on the show. But sources revealed that when the camera stopped rolling, the women hated each other. One source said about their relationship, quote, Jenna can't stand Jen's over-the-top theatrical fakery. Jen never fails to ham it up when the cameras are rolling, and she hijacks the show. It seems she'd prefer if Jenna just stayed in the background. The insider continued that JLo is a micromanager who tells everyone else what to do. Because of all her input, Jenna felt excluded and felt like her voice was not heard. Although there is a chance that this feud is not accurate because when Dewan's team was asked about the feud rumors, they denied them. Ojani Noah Jennifer Lopez has been married three times before. Her first and shortest marriage was to Cuban waiter Ojani Noah. Although their relationship ended in 1998, it's clear that Noah cannot stand her. And whenever asked about Lopez, he does not hold back his negative feelings. Back in 2006, he was actually set to release a juicy tell-all book about Lopez called 
The Unknown Truth, a passionate portrait of a serial thriller. But before it was set to be published, Lopez was able to stop it with a lawsuit. She argued that publishing the book broke their confidentiality agreement, and the courts agreed. From that lawsuit, she won $545,000 in damages, and Noah was forbid from criticizing or casting in a negative light or otherwise disparaging Lopez. Noah's name was brought up once again when he threatened to leak an intimate tape of the two of them on their honeymoon. Lopez then filed a $10 million lawsuit against him. When asked why the relationship ended, Noah blamed Lopez, saying, Quote, I was looking forward to being with her for the rest of my life. It didn't happen. She made the choice of her career instead of me. And finally, Jennifer Lopez herself. Nobody has done more to warn us about JLo's sketchy behavior than herself. And some of the things she's done in the past are too terrible to ignore. Back when she tried to score a role in competition with actress Claire Danes, JLo said some harsh things about her competition, saying that Claire Danes does the quote, same thing with every character she does. Then Lopez bashed Winona Ryder, saying that she was not a big fan of her work. And finally, Lopez took aim at Gwyneth Paltrow, saying, quote, Tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Then in a different interview, Lopez decided to take aim at Madonna, specifically bashing Madonna's attempt at acting. Quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that, I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Aside from dishing out unnecessary shade to other celebrities, Lopez also has a reputation for being incredibly rude to service people. One United Airlines employee told the press how much of a diva she was during her flight. Apparently, he asked if she wanted a drink, and she replied, quote, I just said, what can I get you to drink? But Jennifer refused to even acknowledge me. She turned her head away and told her personal assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and lime. Even though the stewardess was trying to serve her what she wanted, she refused to look and made her assistant speak for her. It's so ridiculous and an unnecessary power play. But this interaction is nothing compared to the maid that was fired for asking JLo for an autograph. The maid later spoke with media and said she asked JLo's two assistants who rejected the autograph. Then a day later, the hotel said that Lopez complained about the incident, and that maid was fired. First up, Kim Cattrall. Easily the most famous feud that Sarah Jessica Parker has been a part of was with her longtime co-star, Kim Cattrall. Kim and Parker, along with Kristen Davis and Cynthia Nixon, starred together on the hit show Sex and the City for several years, even starring in two hit movies together. But after the show ended, we learned that there was a lot of tension between the women throughout the entirety of the show. And there was an intense division between the women. It was three versus one, with Kim Cattrall being the one left out. In a 2017 New York Post article titled Inside the Mean Girl Culture That Destroyed Sex and the City, it explained that SJP and Cynthia Nixon became friends instantly as they had worked together in the past. Then Kristen Davis was welcomed into their group, but Cottrell was left out. Cottrell was closest with the show's creator and producer, Darren Starr, but was left lonely when he was replaced with a good friend of SJP's, Michael Patrick King. Then a report in The Telegraph revealed that Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cottrell feuded again when SJP was titled as an executive producer on the second season, which made her salary much higher and gave her more control on the project. Kim tried to negotiate for a higher salary as a result, but was denied. This same report also looked back at the time in 2004 when Cottrell didn't sit with the other actresses at the Emmys, to which she said, quote, are we the best of friends? No, we're professional actresses. We have our own separate lives. Then in 2009, while the women were filming the first movie of the franchise, an article stated that Cottrell and SJP were no longer speaking. However, when they spoke about it themselves, the women shut down any rumors of a feud. We're assuming to help keep the integrity of the show together. But then when talks of the third Sex in the City movie started, it was revealed that Cottrell was the reason that it was stalled. Apparently, Kim asked Warner Brothers to produce other movies that she was a part of, or she wouldn't agree to do the third movie. Warner Brothers did not agree, and the movie never happened. Then in an interview later with Piers Morgan, Cottrell revealed that she never intended to go back to the franchise. She told Piers, quote, We've never been friends, we've been colleagues, and in some ways that's a very healthy place to be, as you have a clear line between your professional life and your personal too. Adding, quote, I really think Sarah Jessica Parker could have been nicer. But this feud is not over. Things picked up once again when Cottrell's brother passed away. Sarah Jessica Parker took to Instagram to share her condolences. She wrote in an Instagram comment, quote, Dearest Kim, my love and condolences to you and yours, and Godspeed to your beloved brother. But Kim hated this comment so much that she decided to respond in a separate post. The post tagged Parker and said, quote, Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. 
Let me make this very clear if I haven't already. You are not my family. You are not my friend. Clearly putting their feud on blast to the public for the first time ever and making it clear that they had problems back when they were filming the show. Because of this long running feud, Kim Cattrall is not a part of the new revival and just like that. The show did not kill off Samantha Jones, rather they wrote that she moved to London following a fight with Carrie Bradshaw. From Cottrell's social media activity, it's clear she has no regrets about her choice not to be a part of the new show. Next up, Candace Bushnell. If you didn't already know, the Sex and the City series is based on the book by Candace Bushnell, so essentially Candace is the real life Carrie. Bushnell's book was inspired by the column she wrote for the New York Observer in the 1990s. And after the feud started, she decided to weigh in on the feud between the ladies and seemingly took Cottrell's side over Parker's. Bushnell told the New York Post, quote, I absolutely love Kim, but it seems she wants to do other things and she doesn't feel like doing the show. Maybe she doesn't want to be the character anymore. Maybe she doesn't want to put the spanks on. Adding quote, in real life those women are not those characters, they are the opposite. Sarah Jessica Parker, she's been married forever to the same guy, she's got kids. I don't know her very well, but she seems to be very family oriented in a way that Carrie is not. This comment could also be interpreted to mean that the ladies are not friends off camera as they are on camera, which we've obviously seen with Kim Cattrall. When asked if she was going to be watching the new revival, Bushnell said, quote, of course I'm going to watch it, I hope it runs for six seasons and I get paid a bit of money. Next up, Michelle Collins. A woman named Michelle Collins exposed Sarah Jessica Parker and her husband after Collins wrote a number of emails that Parker sent to her staff over the years. In the emails that Collins claimed were written by Parker, she told her staff to refill a tiny container of Vaseline with a small spoon or knife for her children's use. In the email, Parker stressed not to make the refill jar too big so that it doesn't clutter her home. Also after this is done, the cutlery used for that task must be washed in a specific way. It must be hand washed using a paper towel followed by a cycle in the dishwasher. In another email, Parker also requested that a bottle of face wash and Neutrogena body wash be continually replenished for her 14 year old son, James Wilkie, in his personal shower. One of Parker's staff allegedly revealed that they are not allowed to buy multiples of any products and said they must check the levels of everything daily and only buy something new if it needs to be immediately replaced. Michelle Collins also claimed that when SJP's kids came down with pink eye, Parker sent the team instructions on how eye drops should be administered, including how hard the children should blink after. The last email shared showed Parker's shopping list for her family's Taco Tuesday dinner, which included, quote, whatever meat goes in tacos. However, I did want to know this all could be a lie, because when Parker was asked to comment on the outrageous emails, Parker's team said they had no idea who Michelle Collins is. Next up, Robert Downey Jr. A little known fact about SJP is that she was in a long term relationship with Robert Downey Jr. before she got married to Matthew Broderick. The pair dated for seven years before Parker called it quits. Years later, they both revealed secrets about the relationship, and Parker exposed that she had to let him go due to his struggles with illicit substances. Parker then revealed in a Vanity Fair interview that the relationship taught her how to be a parent. She said, quote, It taught me how I love. And what's the difference between loving and taking care of people and what's necessary and what grown ups should do and shouldn't do for each other. And maybe it taught me a little bit about being a parent too. Because the things that I ended up caring about and the way I cared for Downey were things that might be more suitable for a parent. Although some felt these comments were endearing, many thought that they were actually patronizing and that she was belittling Robert Downey Jr. insinuating that he wasn't able to take care of himself. Although Downey Jr. has been very respectful responding to these comments and he largely agreed that his son substance issues were the downfall of their relationship. And finally, SJP herself. After marrying fellow actor Matthew Broderick, SJP has mothered three children with him. Since Parker was a mother for a part of her time on Sex and the City, she has opened up about how she's able to raise her kids while being a working mom. In 2010, Vogue asked her if she had any live-in nannies helping her, as her children had been photographed with nannies before. SJP responded, quote, We painted our patio furniture ourselves. I make my children's food myself. We put together their high chairs ourselves. We do a lot ourselves. We do our own grocery shopping. We go to the market ourselves. You know, I do my laundry. This was followed by a 2014 interview with Huffington Post, where Sarah Jessica said she caught the subway, quote, every single day to and from work every single day. She somewhat avoided answering the question, but later revealed that she's had a lot of help, but no live-in nannies. On the Girl Boss podcast, she said, quote, all I do is organize people's lives and get them here and there. Fans are angry she makes it seem like the every woman running a home and a job like many modern women are. However, it's clear she's not like the rest of us and she does have help she most likely just doesn't want to own up to.